welcome to Love and Money Secrets TV. And today we are diving deep into chapter nine. We are over the 50% mark of the Becoming Supernatural book by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And as you know, we discussed chapter eight yesterday. And tonight we are going into chapter nine, which is about walking meditation. So let's get started. I'm excited to review this. Um, information with you and read, review, and apply what I've learned and pay it forward. All right. Most spiritual traditions embrace four meditation postures, and at our advanced workshops, we practice each of them. There's sitting, which hopefully you're in the process of mastering. There's standing and walking, which are combined in the meditations you'll learn in this chapter and then there's lying down. While each type of meditation posture serves its own purpose, place and time, each builds upon the other to help us maintain and regulate our internal state, no matter what is happening in our environment. But what could be the relevance of bridging the sitting meditation with the standing and walking meditation? Although practicing your meditation when you wake up is an ideal way to start your morning. If you can't maintain that energy and awareness throughout the course of your day, you're likely to fall right back in to the unconscious programs that have been running your life for years. So for example, let's say you just finished your sitting meditation. When you open your eyes, you probably feel more alive, awake, clear, and empowered and ready to start your day. And perhaps your heart feels open, expanded and connected, or perhaps you just overcame an aspect of yourself and you shifted your energy and emotionally embraced a new future. But more often than not, you may fall right back into your unconscious programs and all the work you did, just did to create an elevated emotion and internal state dissolves into a never ending to-do list making lunches and sending your kids off to school, rushing to work, getting irate at the person who cut you off on the freeway, answering phone calls, returning emails, hustling to appointments, and so on and so on. So in other words, you're no longer in a creative state because you've just returned to the habitual programs and the survival emotions of your past. So when this occurs, you disconnect from the energy of your future. And essentially you leave the energy, the energy you created right where you were sitting in your meditation, as opposed to carrying it with you throughout the day. You're, you've energetically returned to the past. So since I too have been guilty of this, I started thinking about how our students could take this energy with them and embody it during the course of their day. So that's why I created a meditation that includes standing and walking, so that when you become adept at raising your energy or frequency and marrying it with a clear vision, you now have a practice that enables you to maintain that elevated energy all day long. So that over time, this becomes your natural state of being. The purpose of this chapter is to help you do just that. So walking into your future, you've already learned that throughout much of your day, you're behaving unconsciously, unaware of what you're doing and why. For instance, you may not remember driving to work because you were lost in an argument you had a few days prior, or you may be focused on how you're going to respond to your significant other's angry text. Maybe you're simultaneously running three programs at once, texting, talking, and checking emails. You may not even be aware of your nervous tics or their causes, your posture and how it's perceived as shy, or how your speech, facial expressions, and the energy you bring into your room affect your coworkers. These unconscious programs and behaviors occur because the body has become the mind. And it's the combination of these unconscious programs that makes up who you are. 
So you know by now that when the body becomes the mind, you're no longer living in the present moment. And so you're no longer in a creative state, which means you're keeping your goals, dreams, and visions at arm's length. So by becoming aware of these unconscious behaviors and programs, however, you can work to actively broadcast a new electromagnetic signature that is in line with your future. And the more you broadcast that electromagnetic signature into the field, the sooner you will become it and it will become you. When there's a vibrational match between your energy and that future potential that already exists in quantum, that future event is going to find you. Or better yet, your body will be drawn to a new reality. You will become a magnet to a new density, which will manifest as an unknown new experience. So for a moment, think of your future reality as if it already exists vibrating as an unmaterialized energy in the quantum field. So imagine your future as a vibration coming from a tuning fork that has just been struck. The sound it emits is a vibrating traveling on a certain frequency. If you also exist as a tuning fork, that was actually a meditation bowl, so if you also exist as a tuning fork, as you change your energy to resonate within the same harmonic of that quantum possibility of your future, you connect with and align to that frequency. The longer you can maintain and tune your energy into that frequency, the more you vibrate at the same harmonic of energy. So now you're connected to that future reality because you're operating at the same frequency or the same vibration. So the closer the frequencies come together in space and time, the more they influence each other until they entrain to one frequency. That's the moment when your future finds you. This is how you create new realities. It stands to reason then that the energy and that the instant your energy changes, because you're feeling lower survival emotions, there's dissonance and incoherence in between you and your future reality. So you are no longer resonating within the frequency of that possibility. And this causes you to become out of sync with the future you are trying to create. So if you can't give up that reaction because the addiction to those emotions has such a grip on you. You'll just wind up creating more of the same reality because your energy is vibrating equal to the reality you're reacting to. So in chapter three, you learn that all possibilities exist in the eternal now. And that when you get beyond your identity as a body connected to people, objects, places, and time, you become pure consciousness. So you become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, in no time. It is in that elegant moment that you transcend the material realm of matter and enter into the quantum field of information and energy. Now that you are beyond your associations to this physical reality, you are creating from a unified field Thus, you are creating from a level of energy that is greater than matter. I'm going to pause right here because what this is telling us is that we are creating now from a level that is greater than matter. So this 3D world, the tangible world of things that we can touch, you know, our bodies, the things, objects, this is the matter world. But when we are in meditation and we applied the formula, which is slowing down our heart rate, slowing down our breath, slowing down our brain waves. Then we become no one, nobody, no thing, nowhere, in no place, and in no time. We are detached to the physical body. We actually, when you are doing the breathing, there comes a point where 
you no longer feel your body because your your awareness and your focus is on the breath and you are taking your attention from the first energy center you know at the base of your spine at the perineum you're going to the second and you're inhaling as you're doing this as slowly as possible then you're going to your second energy center two inches below your belly button to your third energy center two inches above your belly button to your fourth energy center to your heart you're feeling your heart open wide and expanding with the feeling of love then you go up to your fifth energy center so your attention is here and that's where the energy is traveling up you up you to the fifth energy center to your throat to the sixth energy center to your pineal gland you hold and then you as you exhale you feel the breath slowly go down to the bottom so you don't feel your hands you don't feel your head you don't feel your legs you don't feel, feel your bum you don't feel your feet you don't feel any of that. You are just feeling the energy and you're feeling the breath as you focus on those things. And as you do that, you're slowing down your heart rate, slowing down your breath, slowing down your brain waves. And then before you know it, you go into the theta state. And sometimes like I feel like a shift where it's like almost like a down, you know, like if you, if you ever drove, if you've driven a stick shift car, you know how you downshift that's kind of what it feels like to me where it's like all of a sudden you kind of like feel a shift and you just kind of sink deeper in a bigger vacuum void of just blackness and space and you don't have an awareness of your body you're just an awareness of the space and then dr joe depending on what meditation it is that he's guiding you through you are focusing on different parts of the, of the body and the space around that spot in the body inside your body and then he takes you to take your awareness from that convergent focus to the divergent focus where now you are focusing on the outside of your body 360 degrees not just in this horizontal but also above and below you and diagonally and he doesn't say diagonally but he, he is inferring that it's the space all around you so you're thinking if you will, from a, not a circular, because circular is two dimensional, it's more from a spherical perspective. Okay. So we're creating is done in that quantum field where you are no one, nobody, no thing, nowhere, no place in no time. You are not attached to your body. You are now just that awareness and you just continue to focus doing the breath because your goal is to stay into theta state, maybe even go into gamma state if you're lucky. And that is where now you apply the formula. You have a focused intention. It's attention, insight, intention. And then you have the elevated emotion. You've already opened your, your heart. So now you're going to bring that elevated emotion, which is the gasoline on the fire that launches the rocket fuel launches the rocket puts the order in if you almost literally speaking it puts the order in so that now from an elevated emotion of love you also then express gratitude and appreciation because gratitude and appreciation are the ultimate state of receivership it is when you are in that emotion of love gratitude and appreciation that then your brain thinks oh this is a memory from the past not something happening now or something in the future your because your brain is an archive of everything in the in the moment and in the past but because you're in appreciation gratitude and appreciation it thinks oh she must have gotten it already otherwise she wouldn't be grateful because typically we're grateful for things that we have received. So your brain is like, oh, okay, so we've received this already. It's like, got it. So it stores that future memory that you're mind mapping forward. It's now going to categorize it in your memory bank of the past. And now as you do the meditation again, now you are going to the past because you're going to have that same visualization. But you're forward casting and you are recalling a future memory. 
and you're bringing those elevated emotions, which is just add, adding more rocket fuel. So now it's like, okay, it's like you're you keep on doing, you know, command S, like command save, command save, command save, command save on your computer. And now as you do that, the time that you're taking to focus your awareness and your energy and as you get better at mastering yourself, because that's what this work is really all about. It is self mastery. It's you, it's you distinguishing that only the thoughts that are loving to yourself, only when you're in that pure state of consciousness, where all you're doing is focusing on the things that we just discussed, any thoughts of maybe I'm not doing it right, or maybe I'm not breathing right, or maybe my heart rate's not slow enough or Maybe everybody else is getting this, but not me, or I'm not quite sure I'm doing this meditation right, or um, this meditation is falling flat. I, I better start all over again, or um, I suck at this. I'm never going to get this right, or why can everybody why can everybody else figure this out, but I can't, and um, all those negative thoughts, any thought that isn't anything other than focusing on your breath breathing, you know, getting the slow breathing and the things that are the instructions are your ego. And it's the emotional body that's stuck in your body that your brain is interpreting as a vibration and it's bringing it back up. And it's basically betraying you because even though you're trying to focus on this meditation, it's bringing up these things. It might even say, oh, I'm hungry. And you're like, no, I'm hungry. When I sat down to do this meditation, I wasn't hungry. And now all of a sudden I'm hungry. So then you go, no, no brain. Now do as I say, I am your master. You are my servant. I need all of my attention, all of my energy on this focused intention for this meditation. After we're done, I'll feed you. But right now, this is what we are doing. And I love how Dr. Joe equates it. He equates it to you telling your dog, heal. No, heal. I'm going to feed you water. I'm going to feed you food. But you do as I say, heal. Okay, you did as I, as I asked you to. Now you get rewarded with food and water. Like taming a wild stallion. You know, at first, those horses, I mean, you're trying to tame a wild stallion. It does not want anybody to be riding on it. It tries violently to buck anybody who is on their back without a shadow of a doubt until you stick like crazy glue to that horse and it finally wears itself out and it realizes I'm not going to throw this chick off. She is stuck to me like a tick. There's no way I'm going to be able to get her off. And it finally gives in. It's like, okay, and that realizes, okay, I'm not the boss. She's the boss. I'm going to have to do as she says, because we're not getting rid of her. And that's what your brain is like. Everybody has to go through the uncomfortable, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's discomfort. It's um, unpleasant. It's annoying. It's frustrating. All of those emotions, it's trying because your whole life you've been used to having your ego and your brain be your master. And then you kept your true self at bay. And now you're reversing the roles. And now you're like, no, now my awareness, my free will, my conscious awareness, my focus, that aspect of me that is loving, that knows that's tuned in, tapped in and turned on to the divine, even despite what, whatever my brain and my ego says, my true self, I've been keeping that playing it small and I've been silencing it, allowing the ego in my brain to tell it to be quiet and it's the other way around. So now once you get that and the bulb turns on, trust me, then your ego and your brain get a little bit more um, sly, I should say, because then it won't use the obvious negative things because it knows, oh, she's on to us. This isn't gonna work anymore. So it gives in that and then it might try some things that are more underhanded, not so obvious, things like doubt or a little bit of worry or a little bit or nerves or like I, I think I talked about in the earlier chapters how my legs betrayed me. 
even though my mind said I wasn't nervous, all of a sudden, my, I was like, what the heck? My legs are shaking. I'm like, wait a minute. I can't afford to be losing energy through my legs. I need all my energy to accomplish this goal. So we all have to go through it. Nobody gets off scot-free just having it be easy peasy. Where it's like, oh yeah, no problem. Putting my, my ego and my brain to, you know, to heed my attention. It was like, that oh, was easy peasy. No, everybody has to go through that struggle. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And then you start applying it, not just in the morning and in the evening, like we've been talking about here in chapter nine, but you start to apply it throughout your day, which is the value in having learned how to do sitting, walking, standing, and laying down meditations. Because now if you're able to do a sitting meditation, a walking meditation with your eyes open or your eyes closed, now you could be sitting on a train and you could have either a delay or you could have you know people who are a nuisance sitting next to you or across from you or you know in the car that you're in or you could have you could be driving your car somebody can cut you off and you're not going to you may have a fleeting thought and you're like nope change that's the old me i'm unconditional love now there aren't any exterior conditions that are going to rock my boat. I am like a, like an iceberg. I may appear little. In my case, I really am little. I'm only five foot one. So to the world, I may, I may appear to be little, but inside when I am going in to connect with quantum and I am meditating, I am one with the one. I am vast. I am huge. I am infinite i am limitless i am magic there are no limitations i'm not confined to the wherewithal of this physical petite little body that i have and the same is true for you doesn't matter if you're five years old quantum doesn't care whether you're five years old if you're 120 or 130 years old doesn't matter. This is one place where size doesn't matter. Isn't that great news? So let's move on to the next section. Okay. So thus you are creating from a level of energy that is greater than matter. So for the most part, our students have practiced this sitting down. The purpose of the standing and walking meditation is to make you more mindful of the present moment to help you maintain and sustain elevated states throughout the day. So to keep you more connected to the future with your eyes open and to assist you in literally stepping, stepping in to your new future. So when you begin practicing walking meditations, it's best to find a quiet place in nature so you're not easily distracted and the fewer people and less activity around you, the easier it is to stay focused. I'm going to stop right here. Because when we were in the monastery and we were actually doing these walking meditations and we have, we have walking meditations that we do with our eyes open and there are walking meditations that we do, do them where our eyes are not completely shut, but they're just where you can just see a little sliver. They're mostly shut. I'd say 80% shut. And then you can just see a tiny little bit. In fact, if you look at Buddha statues, oftentimes you'll see that his eyes are not completely shut. They're, it's a partial opening. So we do meditations with that particular uh, modality, modality, I'm going to call it. Now, the benefit to you is just like, you know, it's just like practicing, like in sports, they have you do all sorts of different drills in sports, like for example, in golf. So you have a perfectly good golf course with mostly greens. And then of course you have some waterways and you have some some lakes and so forth, and you have some sand traps and so forth. And in some cases, you might unfortunately hit your ball, you might tee off and get your ball to, you know, end up in one of those traps, whether it's, you know, a sand trap or whether it's a waterway or any body of water on a golf course. Now, really good golfers will throw their balls on purpose into a sand trap in the middle of a trap, on the edge of the trap, on the, 
on the slope of a trap in the most impossible places all the time. They'll get their water, their, you know, their ball to fall into the water and they practice hitting the ball accurately despite that handicap position because they know that in all likelihood it's possible that even though during practice they don't they normally avoid that but we don't always have perfect wind currents sometimes we have gusts of winds and i'm not just talking here in california i'm talking you know globally and serious golfers don't just go you know they don't just golf in their city or their state they you know travel all over the world you know for this <laughs> i should know i was a golf widow because my uh ex my husband he was a, is a to this day he's a scratch golfer so he's always golfed all over the world north america south america the caribbean and europe and let me tell you, the winds in St. Andrews in Scotland, it's nuts. The gales they have are like 75, 80 miles an hour. And serious golfers, it doesn't matter. Rain, sleet, snow. I mean, I could barely walk against the wind at 75 miles an hour. It literally stopped me dead in my tracks, almost blew me away. He still golfed, and I think he, I don't remember, but I think he, his... Score, of course, was higher than normal, but it was still like 71 or 72, some low score like that, which is unheard of, I know, but he's a scratch golfer. So the point being that you practice these things when it's not that big a deal. You're doing it without pressure so that when now you're in a competition and now you've got the pressure of competition, you have muscle memory. So now you'll be able to implement that. And that's exactly what I found. So that when I found myself, have found myself and had to then with a life circumstance that either was a, an emergency, a crisis, an unwanted situation, I was able to use my walking meditation with my eyes open and I was able to slow down my breath. And even though there were people around me and there was a little kind of craziness kind of going on, didn't matter. As soon as I realized that it was an unwanted situation, after I was like, oh my gosh, you fill in the blank. I'm like, oh, I know the drill. I gotta slow my heart rate, slow my breath, slow my brain waves down. I need to get into theta. Those are the exact words that I think in my head. My prayer for you and my wish for you, wish is wishy-washy, no. So my visualization for you is, that you would start to practice and do this so that when you get yourself, everybody is going to get themselves or life happens. Things happen. Just like we've got this global thing kind of going on. Doesn't matter. So you'll be able to go, oh my gosh, stop, pause. Gotta slow my heart rate. Gotta slow my breath. Gotta slow my brain waves down. Gotta get in theta state. You tell yourself, if you have to tell yourself out loud, you tell yourself in your head, but my mind chatter now is exactly the same every single time. Oh my gosh, no way, up, oh, stop. I gotta slow my heart rate, I got this. I gotta slow my heart rate, I gotta slow my breath, I gotta slow my brain waves. And then you start to do a walking meditation or maybe you have a, an opportunity to sit down. Maybe you're in your car in the middle of a, unwanted that happened to me too i was in the middle of an unwanted situation in malta that's a story we'll talk about some other time bottom line is i was sitting holding on to my wheel and i said oh i know what to do i followed the formula and then interestingly enough within minutes i had help out of nowhere so Okay, so eventually when you get better at it, you can practice this in a shopping mall while walking your dog or somewhere else out in public. I'm going to stop here also to make another um, interjection. I think that, first of all, just doing the breath alkalizes your body, alkalizes your bloodstream. If you're alkalizing your body, your bloodstream, your cerebral spinal fluid, your muscles, your entire system is being alkalized just by you doing the breath. Why not practice the breath? 
every chance you get, whether you're meditating or not. So what do I mean by that? So that means you're driving your car. You can practice while you're at a red light doing the breath, or you might be moving forward in your car and doing the breath. Now I do want to caution because this is, I'm only telling you to do what it is that I have done. As you can tell, I'm very passionate and very serious about applying this work. Now, what surprised me the first time this happened to me where I was doing my breath as I was driving and then I realized, oh, it's like, whoa, because I have practiced so much, my brain has little resistance. It has muscle memory. It knows, oh, she's doing the breath. We need to go into theta. So what happens then all of a sudden, I felt that downshift as I'm driving and I'm like, no, I need to be fully alert. I can't be going into theta while I'm driving, but I'm going to myself. I'm thinking, man, that is pretty cool. I can practice my breath and I can also tell my brain, no, I'm not going to go into theta now because I'm driving and I need to be fully alert. So I can't afford to do that downshift and go into the theta state. So I am just going to I'm just gonna keep my hands on the wheel and I'm going to practice the breath. And then I slowed down the pace at which I was, or I should say, I didn't slow down, I actually sped up the pace uh, so that I got more oxygen to my, to my brain so that I would not go into theta state, okay? So the point is you're in control all the time. But the encouraging thing is that, whoa, you know, when I first started doing the breath, I gotta tell you, nothing happened for a long time. Now, I can't tell you how long it was because I really didn't measure. I just knew that if I practiced the breath, it, it would work. And I just, there were no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I knew that age, size, physical, uh, you know, how fit, how not fit you are. There's people of all different, you know, every combination you could ever possibly imagine so from super ultra sick to paralyzed to if people like that can do it, why can't I? So I knew that it was a matter of time before it would click and I would feel something. I would feel some sort of movement and energy. And I had felt move, movement of energy independent of that kind of breath um, before, but not in the context of doing that specific breath that Dr. Joe teaches us. So, okay, I hope that helps at least one of you who's watching this video at this time, okay? So eventually, when you get better at it, you can practice this in a shopping mall while walking your dog or somewhere else out in public. So in many ways, the standing and walking meditations are just like the seated ones. You begin by standing still, closing your eyes, resting your attention in your heart, all the while slowing down your breath and breathing in and out of the center. So when you feel heart-centered, just as you do in your seated meditations, you begin cultivating elevated emotions that connect to your future. So once you feel fully grounded in these elevated emotions for a few minutes, Open your focus and radiate that energy beyond your body until you feel it within you as well as all around you. I'm going to pause here too, because sometimes he will say you're going to broadcast out the energy all around you, or you're going to radiate the energy all around you. It all means the same thing. And so you're feeling the energy inside of your heart. Sometimes you feel like a swirly feeling. Sometimes you just feel like a, like a certain density in your chest. And then you're just going to imagine that fanning out side of your body so that it's encompassing. It's like covering you like a mist or like a bubble around you. And that bubble expands so that it not only covers your body as if it were an aura, but that it fans out bigger. It covers the entire house or apartment or building or complex that you live in, the entire city block, the entire city, the entire state, the entire country, the entire continent, and then eventually the entire globe, and then you even take it out into outer space after that. 
So next, lay upon the energy of these elevated emotions, the intent of what you want for your day or your future, whether it's to radiate a synchronicity, lead a noble life, make a difference in the world, create a new job or relationship or something else. Now you are broadcasting a new electromagnetic signature into the quantum field. The only difference is that instead of sitting with your eyes closed and radiating love, elevated emotions, you're standing up with your eyes closed so that when you open your eyes and begin walking, you'll be able to embody that elevated energy. So as you continue to stand eyes closed with an open focus, you take your attention off the outer world and your brain waves slow down from beta to alpha states. This causes the thoughts, analysis, and chatter inside your head to quiet down, inducing a trans state and making you more suggestible. As you learned in the previous chapter, the longer you can remain in this trans state, the less resistance there is to new information entering your subconscious mind. Now stop here. So this is the beauty because you now have put yourself into this very relaxed trans state. You have now opened up. You've taken the lid off of your conscious mind and now you have uncovered and given yourself access to your own subconscious mind. So now you can put in whatever you want in your subconscious mind. You can program it to the desires, the wants, the goals, the dreams, whatever it is that you want, you put it in at this time. But now you're the master, truly. So when you're in an elevated emotional state that aligns you with your future, you will be prone to accept, believe, and surrender to the intentional thoughts equal to those emotions. This means the thoughts, visions, pictures, and images of your mind is creating can make it past the analytical mind and you can program the autonomic nervous system to create the biology of your new future. Since you have created the energy of your new future while standing with your eyes closed, now it's time to open your eyes and begin walking. Don't look at anyone and don't pay attention to objects or things or anything else around you. Simply keep your focus open. Transfix your gaze on the horizon and remain in trance. The more you're in trance, the less likely you'll be to think in old familiar ways. In the meantime, your mind will be connecting to the images of your new future rather than replaying programs of the past. Now you're ready to walk into your future as someone else because you are walking as your future self. You now have to become aware of the way your current self has always unconsciously walked. It's time to alter your stride, your pace, your posture, your breathing, and your movement. You might smile instead of staring blankly. You might have to imagine what walking as a wealthy person feels like by modeling a wealthy person. You might adopt the posture of a courageous person you admire. Walk within the elevated energy of your future, healthy body or walk as an open-hearted, loving, accepting person. Basically, you're conscious. You're consciously embodying the person you've always dreamed you could be, but walking as if your future self is imperative. So for example, you might imagine that it's one or two years later and you already have all the things that you want. The most important ingredient is for you to embody that future person right now. If you already are that identity, you no longer need to wish you will become that person because it's already happened. 
You already embody the qualities of your future. You are simply thinking, acting and feeling your future self. As you begin to practice walking differently and continue to practice day in, day out, you're going to get into a habit of walking like a wealthy person, thinking like a healthy person, standing like a confident person, and feeling like a free, unlimited, grateful person. Gratitude means it's already happened. Instead of perhaps a beat up, worn down, stressed out person. The more you practice, the more this new way of being will become a new habit. And these habits will become your new automatic patterns of thought, behaviors, and emotions. So once you start naturally feeling and embodying these elevated emotions, they will inhabit you and you will actually become the person you want to be. Graphic 12 in the color insert shows a student who changes his brain in about an hour after doing a walking meditation. Okay, priming the brain for future memories. So the walking meditation is also about creating memories of things that haven't happened yet in a linear time. In effect, remembering your future. So when you produce elevated feelings with your eyes closed, radiate that energy beyond the field of your body and then open your eyes and begin walking and leading with your heart, feeling those elevated emotions with your eyes open. The more you feel that emotion, the more you're going to pay attention to the pictures, images, and thoughts that are creating your feelings. This process naturally upgrades your neural circuitry by creating a new inward experience. Experience enriches the brain and creates memories. Now your brain is no longer living in the past. It's living in the future. The more you embody your elevated emotions correctly, the more your brain and body will look like the future experience has already happened. That means you're technically remembering your future. So remaining in trans is important because as you align your body with your future and change your inner world, you're creating long-term memories. Since where you place your attention is where you place your energy, you may even want to flash scenes of your mind movie in your head while you're envisioning, embodying, and feeling your future. Okay. I'm going to pause here. I recently interviewed uh, uh, Alexandra Cousins, who is originally from Europe and uh, lived in Italy, originally from Germany, lived in Italy, grew up there, and was living in South Africa when she came to Dr. Joe's work, was very, very ill. Uh, she was working as a designer at the time, and her husband I don't remember what it is that he did for a living, but she basically talks about how in her meditations, as Dr. Joe would walk us through the meditations, where she would come to the point where she had to add, she added the elevated emotion of love and then gratitude and then appreciation. She said that she would actually step into the energetic body. She's like, she said, she even motioned like this, where it's like, you know, cause she was picturing the, the vision of the person in front of her. So she would create the energetic version of herself and then she would step into the body. And she said she would feel as she slipped into that bodysuit. She said she felt the energy through her arms, in her head, in her chest, in her torso, all the way down her legs into her feet. And she said that for her, that made a really big difference. And you know, that's one way of doing it. The way I do my meditations, I already subjectively see myself where I'm seeing through my eyes as if, um, as if it's really happening. So I don't see it third person objectively. I see it subjectively where I'm inside my body as I am right now. So in my mind's eye, I am projecting myself to be in my mind's eye and I am there. And so I'm seeing through my eyes, I'm feeling everything in that realm. And then I'm, 
I'm experiencing with all my different senses in past tense, um, you know, the thing that I want as the end result. So, so in my case, I don't have to step into the body because I've already done it as a first step when I'm creating the scene in my mind's eye. I hope that makes sense to you all. Okay, so as you do this, those mind movie scenes will become the energetic and biological maps to your future. The act of feeling the emotions of your future in the present moment and combining these emotions with your intention does two things. One, it installs new circuits to make your brain an intentional map to the future. And it also produces the emotional chemicals for that future event, which signals new genes in, in new ways, thus conditioning your body to prepare it for a new destiny. So remember that this meditation is not about what you get in life. It's about who you become or who you are in the process of becoming. If you are trying to get wealth, success, health, or a new relationship, you are still conditioned to thinking you are separate from something and you have to go get it. So I'm going to pause here because this is something that can easily be glossed over and missed. And it's a very important distinction. It's a precept. So if you're trying to get, you can't be in the, mo in the mode or anchored from a place that you're trying to get, that you want, that you desire, that you're trying to obtain, you're seeking it. No, you have to be in it. So you have to be in the place where you are experiencing that you have received whatever it is. And that because you're in that place of receiving it, that you have an incredible amount of love that's coming from your heart and it's broadcasting out. And then you have gratitude and appreciation and you're like, thank you, thank you, thank you. You actually say the words that you would say to the party that's involved in that co-creation. If there's another human being involved, that's gonna be assisting that you see. And, and what you will find is that after you get out of the meditation and when it comes to pass, you will realize that instead of it being a deja vu experience, it's going to be more like a rewind of the motion picture that's in your mind, except now you're seeing it in 3D. And it's word for word, the exactness of what you will witness will blow your mind. Well, at least I gotta say it's blown my mind. I don't know that I'll ever tire from having that experience because to me, my logical brain tells me it should be a deja vu experience, but it's not a deja vu experience at all. It's more like rewind, there it is again, word for word. It's like, wow, that's incredible. So, but the truth is that the more you become that person, the more reality will shape and mold equal to your new state of being. It's that process of consciously becoming that helps you maintain alignment to a different destiny. The more you practice the walking meditation and walk as your future self, the more you should be able to change your state of being with your eyes open, just as you did with your eyes closed. When you practice this enough times, you will not only carry that energy with you throughout the day, but you'll embody it. This type of repetition will make you feel more mindful in your waking hours. And before you know it, you'll start automatically behaving, thinking, and feeling differently. This is the programming of a new personality to a new personal reality. So over time, who knows, you might find yourself naturally walking like a happy person, behaving like a courageous and compassionate leader, thinking like a noble, empowered genius, feeling like a worthy, abundant entrepreneur. In the middle of your day, you might become aware of the fact that the pain in your body is gone because you're, you're feeling so whole, unlimited, and in love with life. What you've done has made a habit out of being the person you want to be. This is because you installed the circuitry and signaled the latent gene 
to think, act, and feel in a new way. Biologically, you have become that. You have become that person. So becoming mindful and embodying your future self can occur many times throughout the day. Imagine that you're waiting for a friend who's running late, and instead of feeling frustrated and bothered, you're generating the energy of your future. When you're sitting in traffic, instead of getting impatient and angry and whatever, practice tuning in to the energy of your future with your eyes opened. Imagine that you're waiting for a friend who is running late and instead of feeling frustrated and bothered, you're generating the energy of your future. When you're sitting in traffic, instead of getting patient, impatient and angry, practice tuning into the energy of your future with your eyes open. Imagine that when you're in a line at the grocery store and judging a person for what they're buying, you redirect your thoughts to feeling incredibly grateful for your new life, walking as your future self. Imagine when you walk to your car in the parking lot or to your mailbox, you're naturally empowered by the thought of your new life. You'll then begin to accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts equal to that emotional state. And as you surrender to those thoughts, your body will make the chemistry equal to that emotional state. This is how you begin to program your autonomic nervous system into a different destiny. And the more you practice it, the less likely you are to return to autopilot and miss the present moment. I'm gonna pause here for a second because uh, every now and then I have somebody who will reach out to me and they'll they tell me, hey Lillian, it's like, you know, I'm having a lot of trouble visualizing myself as my future self or I can visualize myself, but the elevated emotion part, I just can't seem to get the elevated emotions of, of anything, of love, of joy, of happiness, of giddiness, or whatever, um, gratitude, appreciation. I just can't seem to, I can just visualize it, but it's kind of flat. I get stuck at that part where I have to add the elevated emotion or where I have to broadcast love. So ladies and gentlemen, I think I mentioned this to earlier in uh, some of the previous chapters, if you are having trouble with that, all you have to do is pretend. When you start the, in fact, I suggest that every time you do a meditation, you would start off by saying, okay, I'm gonna do this meditation and I'm gonna pretend that I am the most magical, most mystical, the most um, prolific meditator that ever lived. I am gonna go into the deepest trance, the deepest state of relaxation that I have ever experienced. I'm gonna have the most profound, found mystical experiences. I am going to go into deep theta state and I'm just going to pretend to be this absolute brilliant genius at this. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to pretend. It's no different than you pretending to play cowboy and Indians when you were a kid. You get totally engrossed in that, in that fantasy world. So just do that for this. Believe it or not, it works. It works probably even better if you pretend. Because the mind, the brain does not know the difference between pretend, make believe, the past, the present, or the future. It, it doesn't. That's why it's so powerful for you to use your conscious free will awareness and focus it on what you want. Because it's going to do whatever it is that you tell it to whether you choose by using your free will on purpose or if you choose to allow things to go by default of whatever default programming is already inside you. Okay, the walking meditation. So begin by finding a quiet space in nature and disconnect from your external environment and anchor yourself in the present moment by closing your eyes. Acknowledge your heart center where the soul and heart intersect with the unified field and bring elevated emotions such as gratitude, joy, inspiration, compassion, and love, and so on to the center. So if you're going to believe in your new future with all of your heart, it better be open and activated. So rest your attention on the heart allowing your breath to flow in 
and out of the center ever more slowly, more deeply, and more relaxed for about two minutes. And then return to creating elevated emotions within your heart for two or three minutes. I'm gonna stop here right now because one of the things I'm gonna encourage you to do because this is what I have done and I continue to do, I practice breathing by inhaling as slow, as possible as I can, bringing the energy up all the way up to my pineal gland, putting attention on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth energy center, holding it for as long as I can. I can hold it much longer now that I've been practicing. And then when I feel not like I have to gasp for air because you don't want to hold it that long. When I feel that I naturally need to take another breath, then I slowly exhale as slowly as I can. Exhaling slowly, slowly, slowly till I completely empty out my lungs, reaching to the very bottom. And then when I get to the bottom in a place of non-resistance where I'm not holding my breath on either end, I'm just parked there, completely empty, but in neutral. That does take some practice. But I tell you, if you practice that separate from the meditation and in meditation, the results, I encourage you to write to me about the results because you will have results. There's no, no question about it, okay? So, return to created yeah you're going to return to creating elevated emotions within your heart for two three minutes and you're going to radiate that energy into space surrounding your entire body like i said it's spherically so it's 360 in every direction so you're going to radiate that energy into space surrounding your body in space and stay present with that energy and you're going to tune in to the energy of your future. After a few minutes, you're going to hold a clear intention in your mind's eye. You might pick a representative symbol that connects you to the energy of your future, the way you learned in chapter three. So change your state of being with the feelings of these elevated emotions and focus on broadcasting that new electromagnetic signature into this field. You're going to remain in this state for two to three minutes. And now next, you're going to open your eyes and without looking at anything or anyone, you're going to open your focus and keep your awareness on the space around your body in space while main, man, you're going to maintain a trans state, a peaceful, quiet, relaxed state. Begin walking with your eyes open while you stay entranced. With each step you take, Embody that new energy, that new frequency of whatever you're creating in your future. And as you take this energy with you during your walk, daily life, walking as your new self, you are activating the same neurological networks and producing the same level of mind as when you meditate with your eyes closed. So next, remember your future. Let the images come feeling them and embodying them, own them, become them. Continue to walk for about 10 minutes and then stop to recalibrate. Once again, close your eyes and raise your energy. Stay present with this energy for about five or 10 minutes. For the next 10 minutes, with your eyes open and trans, Walk again with the intent and purpose as your future self. With each step you take, embodying this new energy, you move closer to your destiny and it moves closer to you. So do this cycle two times. When you finish the second round, stop, stand still one last time and really focusing on how you feel with your fourth energy center completely wide open. You can use this opportunity to affirm who you are based on how you feel. And for example, if you're feeling 
unlimited, you can literally acknowledge, I am unlimited. Next, place your hand over your beautiful heart and be willing to feel valuable and worthy enough to receive what you have created. Raise your energy to its zenith and feel gratitude, appreciation, and thankfulness. Now acknowledge the divine within you, the energy that powers you and gives rise to all of life. Give thanks for a new life before it's made manifest, acknowledging the power within you. Ask that your life be filled with unexpected wonder, synchronicities and coincidences that create a joy for existence. Radiate your love while loving your new life into existence. Okay, so one of the things I need to share with you guys that I do, I do love, I do appreciation, I do love gratitude and appreciation in that order. And, you know, I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful. Oh my gosh, the divine, you're so wonderful. You're so awesome. Gosh, I appreciate you so much. I hold you, hold you in such high value and such high, high esteem. I, I um, praise you. Thank you. Thank you. And then I work myself into an ecstatic, bliss filled, giddy, thrilled with light. I'm just like thrilled to pieces. And I just, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Okay. And so I anchor that emotion to that meditation. Now, for me, I know that I know that I know without a shadow of a doubt now, having done this so many times and having manifested everything, anything and everything you could imagine. I mean, it would be unbelievable. And I have it all doc. I can't say all of it documented, but I have a lot of it documented with pictures, with um, witnesses, with video and so forth. And I know that the key is in, in addition to following the steps of the meditation is bringing myself into that elevated emotion of where I am like, just, I'm like thrilled. I'm like stoked and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. I'm like so excited. Yes, I, you know, I made the impossible possible. It's like, I knew it, this is how it's done. It's like, oh my gosh. The exact same way that I'm doing it here with you. You're like, oh, she's a good little actress. Heck yeah, you learn to be a good, good little actress when you realize that your life is at stake. I have gotten myself out of jams that you would not believe using this formula. This meditation works for everything. What does everything not include? Nothing. It works on everything. So the other thing is it feels good. It gives me I think part of why it maybe magnifies and it accelerates things happening faster is because you are actually releasing endorphins and oxytocin. The natural process of meditation, as we know, you are creating melatonin, serotonin, oxytocin, you're creating benzodiazepine, you're creating vasopressin, you're creating dimethyltryptophan, you're alkalizing your body, you're flushing all sorts of antioxidants and free radicals out of your body just by your breathing. So your body is getting a lot of really good, like your flesh and blood is feeling good, which is affecting your psyche, it's affecting your spirit, it's affecting your psychology and your emotion, which is the whole point of doing this. And then the bow on this gift, when you're like done, you let go. You're like, okay, so now I let go, it's done. And I'm like, okay, I have no idea when it's gonna, happen. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I know that it's going to happen. And I'm so, so I still have a residue, uh, emotion on the positive side coming from like, Oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. It happened to, I don't know when it's going to happen, but now I have this joyful, it's like, I have this little secret that nobody else knows about. 
I have all these wonderful things in queue, all these goodies, all these presents. Like I have this like little escrow of all these wonderful things. They're gonna all hatch at all sorts of different times because I'm meditating every day. So it's like, okay, and this thing right now, it's kind of more of an emergent thing, but it doesn't matter the storm that's going on right now because I already put my order in, so I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. So I have a look. So I can walk around the rest of my day. I can walk around the rest of my week. I can walk around, period. In my house, out of my house, wherever I go, I don't care what's going on outside in the rest of the world. I'm unconditionally happy because I'm unconditionally in this love state connected to the divine because I have so many awesome things that I can't afford a luxury of a negative thought. Why would I want to think of a negative thought? No, that's just going to slow all these things that I have in queue that are that I know that they're on their way because the orders are in. My brain, I remember when my brain switched to being finished and it's like the order's in, it's done. So it's a fact, I can take it to the bank. This is gonna happen. How long, I don't know. But you just let go and it doesn't matter. However long it takes, it does not matter. I'm gonna, just gonna keep doing my meditations. I'm gonna keep on creating and moving forward. Okay, so that concludes our chapter nine. Oh my gosh, we only have four more chapters left. Can you believe it? We're about three quarters of the way done with this book already. If you watch a chapter a day, no matter when you're watching this video, you can actually finish the study of this entire book in 14 or 15 days. Let's say 14 days. I think there was a few of the videos that were a little bit on the longer side, so maybe it'll take you two days to, to listen and watch those. So I'm going to say 15 days, give you an extra day to watch the videos. And then you can rewatch the videos and start to dive in deep and start to apply the different things little by little. So that's it. Thank you for tuning in, tapping in, turning on today to Love and Money Secrets TD, TV. So you don't have to be perfect to do this. You don't have to be perfect in life. I was brought up to think that everything had to be done perfect. Heaven forbid, I could not just write a birthday card for a relative or a sibling. Oh no, I had to practice it. It had to be perfect. I had to practice many, many times, 10 times, 15 times, and then do the real thing. And so I was trained to be a perfectionist and I had to let that go a long time ago. It's all good. I'm not blaming anyone. It's part of my journey. I own it. And I'm thankful for it. So these videos, if you're looking for a perfect video, I'm sorry, but I will disappoint you because none of these videos are perfect. And nothing that I've done here is perfect. What I can say is that I'm perfectly sharing from my heart to you. And I hope that you get at least one benefit out of watching these videos and you'll walk away having learned one thing. If you learn just one thing, you will have increased the neural network circuitry of your brain. It will have jumped from 1300 to 2600. You'll actually be smarter. So as you watch each and every chapter, you're getting smarter. You're raising your IQ, not to mention you're going to be exponentially raising your EQ as well. And lastly, you'll also be mastering yourself. You will be a master in your own right. Nobody needs to designate you as, as a master. You will know that you are a master because you are in queue and in the process of mastering yourself, mastering your ego, mastering your brain and embodying the true you that you've always been, that's been in the shadows of your brain and your ego. No more, because now we're taking charge, we're, we're becoming the master.
So thank you for tuning in, tapping in, turning on to Love and Money Secrets TV. I would love, absolutely adore for you to hit that like button. Why? Because it would warm my heart and it would show me that you loved this video. So like it, share it with somebody else that you think that this would be a benefit to. Again, because it'll warm that person who receives the video from you, it'll warm their heart. And subscribe so that you're tuned and you will find out as soon as this video is uploaded. Uh, on, I have a couple channels. So on one channel, it's showing up as you know, live. And then on Love and Money Secrets TV, the edited version that's a little bit more polished up. Not perfect, but the polished up version will appear on Love and Money Secrets TV. Just go to DameLillianWalker.com. It'll take you straight to Love and Money Secrets TV. Or go to YouTube and do Love, then the ampersand, Money Secrets TV. And it'll take you straight to my YouTube channel. And then you'll see chapters one through, in this case, up to chapter nine, because we just finished chapter nine. Okay? Okay, namaste and